Hi guys, I'm back with another video. This time we are going to be learning about the sensory organs. What are the sensory organs, you may ask? The sensory organs are the specialized organs that help perceive the world around us. They are an integral part of our lives and it is the only way that enables us to perceive the environment. Much of this information comes through the sensory organs. Specialized cells and tissues within these organs receive raw stimuli and translate them into signals that, that the nervous system can use. What are the five senses? Smell, sight, touch, hearing, and taste. 1. Eyes, which helps us to see. Eagles and mantis shroom have good eyesight. Two ears, which helps us to hear. Elephants can hear miles away to warn the animals from predators. Three, skin, which covers the body and helps us to be aware about the environment. Spiders and moles have strong sense of touch. Four, nose, helps us to smell. African elephants have good sense of smell. Five, tongue. Helps us to taste. Catfish have the best ones. Sensory organs provide the required data for interpretation through various organs and network of nerves in response to a particular physical phenomenon. These sensors govern our association and our interaction with the environment. Sensory nervous system. The sensory nervous system is a part of the nervous system responsible for processing sensory information. A sensory nervous system consists of sensory neurons, neural pathways, and parts of the brain involved in sensory perception. Sensory flowchart. Sensory receptors. These detect the changes in the environment. Sensory neurons. Nerve cells that send a signal from the Sensory receptors to the CNS, which is the central nervous system. The CNS, is the, which is the brain and the spinal cord coordinator response and sends a signal down a motor neuron. Motor neurons, nerve cells that receive a signal from the CNS and transfer it to the effectors. Effectors, the muscle or glands that produce a response to the stimulus. Here is the small version of the flow chart. Let's see how the sensory nervous system works. First, if you are thirsty, your eye sees the water in front of you. By the sensory neuron, the, by the sensory neuron, it sends it to the brain. The brain sends it to the motor neuron, telling it to Drink the water to clear up your thirst. This way of responding is called decision making, which is unconscious thought. But if you have eaten hot chili by accident, your eye, which is the receptor, immediately sees the stimulus. The sensory neuron takes the information through the to the spinal cord without sending it to the brain. It sends it to the motor neuron straight. The motor neuron immediately tells the arm to drink the water. This way of responding is called the spinal reflex arc, which is rapid and involuntary. The sensory nervous system must receive and process information about the world outside in order to react, communicate, and keep the body healthy and safe. Much of this information comes through the sensory organs. Your brain collects information like smells, sounds, through your five senses. Each sensor collects information about your surroundings and sends it to the brain. Here, we can learn about the parts of the brain. First comes the frontal lobe, which controls motor control, concentration, planning, speech, and smell. And the parietal lobe, which controls touch, pressure, taste, and body awareness. And the temporal lobe controls hearing and face recognition. And the occipital lobe, fourth comes the occipital lobe, which controls vision. 
last but definitely not the least, cerebellum, which controls coordination, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, and the occipital lobe together controls language and reading, which I'm doing literally right now. Sensory processing disorder. Sensory processing disorder is a condition in which the brain has trouble receiving and responding to the information that comes in through the senses. There are two main types of sensory processing disorder that children and adults experience, which is one, which is hypersensitivity, which is over-responsiveness. Two, which is hyposensitivity, which is under-responsiveness. Others with sensory processing disorder may be uncoordinated, bumpy to things, be unable to tell where their limbs are in space, be hard to engage in conversation or play. Symptoms of sensory processing disorder Sensory processing disorder may affect one sense like hearing, touch or taste or it may affect multiple senses. And people can be over or under responsive to the things. Signs of hypersensitivity, which is over responsiveness. Extreme response to high pitched loud noises, fearful of surprise touches, seems fearful of crowds, extreme fear of climbing, has poor balance. Signs of hyposensitivity, which is under responsiveness. It's constant need to touch people, clumsy and uncoordinated movements, extreme or high pain to tolerance, seems to be a thrill seeker and can be dangerous at times. Treatment Treatment depends on child's individual needs. Treatment for sensory processing problems is called integration. The goal of sensory integration is to challenge a child in fun, playful way so they can learn to respond appropriately and function more normally. There are therapies as well as practical changes you can make at home and at school to help your child feel better and do better. Thanks for watching and bye!